Hello and welcome to the second day of March, 2022. Oh, boy, am I feeling old. It really creeps up on you. Suddenly you realize that uh, the brain is starting to uh, not fire on all cylinders and uh, the body's a little more ob obvious and evident. Boy, but I feel that way this morning. Anyway, this is my good life meditation, an activity that I do every morning after I wake up to remind myself of my objectives and principles and to see how I'm doing applying these in my life and to plan for today. Whew. Okay, let's push through this. This is a real push this morning. <clears throat> I slept all right, although I woke up um, like 10 minutes before the alarm went off. And it's, it's a strange thing. The last, in the last couple of days, the pre-dawn waking hasn't been, has been different. It's been for less time, but increased uh, quality, if, if quality is a negative thing. Reduced quality is maybe a better way to say it, but it feels increased. It feels like an, like like somebody's taken the the knob and some dial and twisted it up to high, you know, to eleven, and crank it a little further, so that when I when I wake up before dawn, it's like <laughs> I'm not even thinking about work. I'm just awake. <clears throat> For like ten minutes of that, you know. 10 minutes of <coughs> a loud music you know, can kind of upset and unsettle a good night's sleep, even if the music wasn't there, even if the music is nothing. <laughs> Where is this coming from? I know it's related to work because it decreases over the weekend. When I don't think about work, when I don't need to think about when when work is at a distance, and it's a lot better when I took that two months off. That was a good time, good period of time. So, <clears throat> whatever is going on, is related to my job. And unique when I increasingly, I mean, like every day, <laughs> several times a day, we uh, we talk about you know wanting to. Put an end to all of this, um, this work life, and uh, move on to the next level. I wouldn't even mind. Uh, well, the, the trick is, well, never mind. That's that's a path. The trick is, I'm just. The thing is, I'm just. We're getting old. You know, we're closing in on sixty. There's a reason. This is this is there's a reason that people retire at sixty-five. I think it's that by the time that time you just had enough. You just can't do it. To it, and and you really do want to retire in the most genuine sense. <clears throat> in so far as, you know, retiring away from the world. <clears throat> so. Um, yesterday was a good day, another solid day of work. I think that's what's part of what's doing it. I'm, I'm getting a, a lot done, I work too much. I'm not even taking breaks sometimes. Today's going to be another one of those days. Hmm. Oh, and so in terms of objectives and principles gained and missed, yesterday was a day for the bullseye aim. Remember last week I kept saying it was hitting it square in the mark and that couldn't last? Well, this week has been not lasting. <laughs> And bam, bam! One you just keep th keep throwing the the spinning knives or the the darts and missing the bullseye. It was funny in one one meeting I did it and I saw it go swing wide and I just let it go. I, was, oh, 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 oh. I didn't even try to correct it <laughs> the the once 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 the throw is gone, it's gone.
And in that case, the part of the challenge was that my trying to correct it would be a case of, for example, trying to save face. It wound up looking like I didn't know what the hell was going on because of the way I threw the dart. I did know what was I did know what the hell was going on. Um, and then while I was well, someone very important was uh, within our organization was setting <clears throat> setting me straight, which they wouldn't have needed to have done if I had thrown the dart more accurately and been able to convey the fact that I understood the situation. I just it came across wrong. So so, you know, in the past I would have tried to correct that and wasted that important person's more of that important person's time to attempt to set the record straight. <clears throat> I guess it's a I guess it's a mark of maturity that I said, well, you know, in order to conserve time and to we were closing in on the end of the meeting, I'll just thank you. Thank you for and I understand better. That's what I said. Even though I had understood from the beginning. And carried on. Hmm. I guess I revealed something about that circumstance. Even though I missed the mark, I was able to execute a, a response that was probably more mature than I could have done even five years ago. Maybe even last year. <laughs> All right, well, let's do this. Seven objectives. To be always ready to die. To make good and effective use of time. To develop and maintain good and sound life principles. To cultivate good emotional reactions. To perform good actions. To recognize my true limits and my true opportunities. And to do just one thing at a time and to do that thing slowly. Now my 30 principles. The principle of war. To always be questioning what I think is true and what others propose to me is true. The principle of reason and the sub-principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt. The homunculus, the suggestion that I do not have a soul, but I do have a consciousness that I'll have for as long as I'm conscious. <laughs> the next principle is the anchor hold, the observation that my consciousness is trapped within my head, and though I can reach out and touch and embrace others and speak at them, I can never really get any closer than that. The home of good and evil, the suggestion that right and wrong, good and evil, are opinions that the homunculus maintains. Nothing more eternal or absolute than that. Although they do approach being objective when we can measure and gain, gauge their effectiveness against values that we maintain, a definition of virtue. Some definition of sin, hmm. where sin is not against some deity, but against the better nature of our pursuit of good living. Not quite, didn't come out quite right. Bullseye aim. Next is the principle of purpose, and my purpose are to be a good husband and father, to be a virtuous man, as previously described poorly, and to pursue my mission, which is the sharing of my story, going alone. The next principle is the atomic principle. Everything is made of little bits and pieces, atoms, which form molecules, which come together to form compounds which collect together to form us. The principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature. Or is it the pirate ride next? I'll get it. I'll get it. One of the, it's in the, one of those two orders. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm going off the rails. Everything has some particular nature, and it's good to recognize what that nature is. For example, it's my, the nature of my job to take a lot out of me. Then comes the pirate ride. Well, maybe the pirate ride goes before that. Let me check, because otherwise I'm, I'm going to mess it up. The pirate ride is simply the suggestion that free will doesn't exist. Oh yeah, I did get it right. The principle of nature and then the pirate ride. The suggestion that free will does not exist. That <coughs> we're just jostling reactions, chain reactions. The next principle is the principle of maturity and the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude. Whereas we are mature when we remember our successes and failures and have the strength to uh, do better. The social principle. We humans need other humans. We, we need our pets even. It's good to uh, live a life in accord with that need. Next is the principle of public speaking. The reminder and suggestion to be very careful about what we say and write and the words that we use and to whom we speak these things and I share these words and to never gossip. Next comes temperance. Excuse me, and the sub principles of suffering, simplicity, and apathy, our controlled consumption of life, and our recognition of what is not within our scope of control, and to not let, in, let that up, upset us unduly. That's the apathy part. Apathy is a virtue. Hope is not. Sin, I mean, faith is not, but apathy is. What kind of topsy-turvy world have I created for myself? Next comes the horror show. Why do I feel like I've done it again? I just have this abiding feeling like I'm, I'm missing the mark. The pirate ride, maturity, social, temperance, that's right. If you, oh yeah, it is right. The horror show is next. Life is uh, an, an experience chock full with terrible, horrible things. I want to remember that and use my efforts to try to help. Next comes the Feast of Oval. <clears throat> the upset that we have when we... It's not the upset that we have. It's when we spew that upset out into the world and let everybody know about it. It's not healthy. And I, I don't. I try to not do it myself. And when others are doing it around me, which is rare, but when it happens, I uh, try not to consume that because it's poison of a sort. I can help them, but I, I won't consume the, the the feast. Next comes the principle of distraction. We distract ourselves from the fact that the universe appears to be devoid of any god or gods. We seem to be on our own. <laughs> I call that fact the. Uh, or that apparent fact, the great indifference. Next comes the best seat in the house. Do not want to be anyone else or be anywhere else or be doing anything else but to be okay with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. Then comes the path of wildness, a way to break through stagnant life into a new life by collecting facts, thinking them over, and making an informed decision, possibly informed with our gut feeling, all the while recognizing that the gut can't be ultimately trusted. Nor can the intellect, for that matter, risk is inherent in, in any gamble forward. There's also risk in staying. Mm, my mind. Come on. I can't see the next one. 
<coughs> the best seat in the house, the path of wildness. Is it the risk of avoiding risk? The deep level and surface level risks of life? The surface level stuff being the stuff that we all go after? Home, career, education, family, but not in that order. <laughs> and then the deep level risk is the uh, adventure and experience of finding ourselves, finding ourselves, as the hippies say. But it's a real thing. And then doing something about that. Next comes sin and damnation. Why do I feel like I missed something again? Falsity, credulity, faith, hope, superstition, dogma, authority, and gossip are the sins. The consequence of these is of these of engaging these senses um, damnation in the here and now. <clears throat> Next is complete oblivion. We won't survive this life. There'll be no seeing loved ones after we're dead and no reconciling with them and uh, no justice after the, after the end. Because there won't be anything left of us other than compounds, molecules, and atoms and decreasing like, longevity or increasing longevity. The atoms will remain for quite a while. Long time, I think. Maybe forever. That's a heavy thought. The great life adventure is next. One or more experiences that, uh, well, here and now, form this, the experiences that form the centerpiece of our life, our story. The season of philosophy, the time to record what we've learned along the way. <coughs> but do it while the opportunity is, is, is there. Because the words change. Arena and utility? No, 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 no. The bullseye aim is next. Trying to hit that mark, but usually missing, like I'm I'm doing this week in spades. Missing. Miss, miss, miss. <laughs> it's my nature. It's, it's the nature of the world to only hit the bullseye sometimes, even the best. The uphill climb? Life is a steady strud, steady trudge. Maybe that's what I'm tired of. Yumiko and I are tired of. We're tired of the of the trudge. We want to find a nice hidey hole and sequester ourselves away. Arena and utility is next. Life is an arena for the use of our objectives and principle to to pursue our objectives through the use of our principles towards better ends. Nothing is enough. A suggestion that little is best. And then finally, the principle of fun. I said that too fast. And then finally, the principle of fun. Public speaking, after all. A reminder to have a good time, to enjoy this time of life. <sighs> there, I did my good life meditation for today. Now let's plan for the coming day. After this is done, I'll turn to the Bible. I think I'm on Proverbs 17 now. I'm enjoying Proverbs. Of all interesting wisdom, but there's a lot of the same stuff. <laughs> Just said, said in different flowery vocabulary. And then after that, I'll prepare the dog's breakfast, feed them, prepare my own breakfast, and then I'll take the dogs for a walk with my breakfast. I make an oatmeal type of a thing with a little salad. And then I'll uh, take the dogs for a walk, bring them back, give them their food, I'll eat my food, and then I'll uh, come up here, change into my work clothes, and start my day. I think I have five meetings today, each of them an hour long. Out of a, a nine-hour work day, that's more than half the day. And I have a lot of stuff. I, I still didn't get to the, completing that one document. I made it maybe mm, another 5%, so I'm up to like 75% complete. Uh, it just my brain just runs out of juice. I keep, I keep at it, but I'm just not there, and it just leaves me drained. Yeah. I'm back on that topic again, aren't I? Just so, just so done with work. And I know that I don't think that's going to get any better. Again, that's why people retire at 65. 
although I want to retire. I'm ready to retire at 60. I mean, I may not be fully ready. It'll be a, a frugal, more frugal existence than I would have hoped for, but geez, I don't know if I can keep this up. <laughs> Let's do it. Be safe, but not too safe.